But the trouble was the wind was blowing our way, so it was going straight into the amplifiers, you see. And there was this gigantic tarpaulin above us, which was just bowing inwards with uh, the pressure of rain which had built up. And uh, there were so many possibilities of, you know, really electrical disasters. Sure. That, uh, you know, we didn't really want to sort of just carry on the risk, so we, you know, we asked for sort of 15 minutes grace to try and sort of rectify the situation. However, it, uh, we stayed there for pretty much 30 minutes in the dressing room, and then the, uh, the people that sort of put the stage together show cut. So it's going to take at least an hour. And bit by bit, the whole thing started to build up, you know, into you know, a bit of a, you know, a drama because they'd sent up a, uh, a plane from the Air Force to check out the, the weather. The weather. <laughs> yeah, marvellous. I mean, you know, <laughs> and here could they do something with such style, you know. And, uh, well, it's, it was just impossible. It was just impossible. And apparently the next night, which was the rain date, also rained, you know, so... Well, we're glad to have you here undercover so we don't have to... Yeah. I guess any time you do something in open air, you get the element of the weather and all that. And mm. I must admit it felt j j jolly odd to be... You there. did some theatrics, uh, Tuesday night anyway, I don't know about Wednesday and all, but uh, explain to me a little bit about the laser and how that works and all. Did you put that together? Who put the that whole effect? Well, Jimmy put it together. That's great. That's really yeah. great. That was... Uh, yeah. I guess... We initially wanted a waterfall. But, but uh, a, a, and a video screen which would come up behind it so that you could duplicate it. And also get the colours coming through it and, uh, uh, you know, distorted, you know, visual effects. But uh, there's just going to be too many troubles from the authorities so we had to drop it. Well, where do you practice that? Where, I mean, where do you... A, well, we a never rehearsal with instrument is one thing, but that kind of a thing, where'd you do that? Well, um, well, we would have done it in London before, before we left. In fact, the lasers we, we, we didn't really do it until we got to Dallas. No, no. Most of the rehearsals in London were taken up. Uh, uh, well, our time was taken up just building up the stamina aspect of it. You know, knowing that we had to go for sort of three hours and and. Uh, and play well for three hours, because, I mean, you can bullshit for an hour, but not for three. Right. <laughs> no way. <laughs> what about that instrument? Is that the old instrument, one of the first electronic instruments, the theremin? Well, it sounded, that, like, it sounded yes, like a theremin. It goes, that goes back a long, long time. Yeah, it's one of the first new yeah. strange things that came along, long before they uh, yeah. went into I the mode. Yeah, I to use one, actually. I forgot the first record that had it in. I know the first movie was Spellbound, the thing uh, where Gregory Peck was in Spellbound, and they had that, uh, they used the theremin. That was the first real impact on the public because the movie was so big. Yeah. But God, that was a long time ago. I don't remember how long, but that's a lot of years. That was the first really electronic instrument that was different than what everybody else had done. And I think you move your hands or something to get the sound out that's of it. That's right. The closer you get to the... Uh to what appears to be a transistor radio area behind the pitch cuts. You know, and you fiddle around with it, you know, give it some sort of electronic treatment, and, you know, you get the sort of effects that it gives. Jimmy Page is our guest from Led Zeppelin. We're at WNEWFM in New York, and I have a... Um, I, it's probably a question you're well used to, but... Uh, you know how uh, the public feels about you, and the group and everything, but how do you feel uh, on a tour? Do you like to take a break in between, like you're doing here in New York, and have one day off? Or would you rather work every night well, and just it would, it keep going? It wouldn't be possible. Huh? It wouldn't be possible. It really, m more so on Robert's shoulders. You know, his his vocal cords just couldn't hold up. I don't think anybody's could really. You know, sort of six nights a week would be impossible. And uh, two nights on one night, so one night off seems to be a fair balance, really. That's what I thought, too, and then maybe mm -hmm. taking a break between cities and everything else, but some people mm -hmm. like to just keep going every night and get it out, and yeah, then take a break. You see, again, you know, it's, you know, that you find a lot of bands don't play for that amount of time. You know, it's three hours, three hours, fifteen. Yes, you That's do, you do that. <laughs> and, uh... 
You've got to keep you know, the versatility aspect of it going too, otherwise it won't be sort of, you know, shuffling around in the seats in the, the first hour. Uh, you have any particular feeling, personal feeling about fireworks at the concerts? Well, I know you heard them Tuesday night, opening night, no? Yeah, I think it's a, you know, it's a very, but really irresponsible action because I have heard of people getting, you know, deafened by them that they've landed on their shoulders, you know. And I think when people throw them in the air out of sort of, well, I hope genuine enthusiasm, you know, they don't seem to think of the consequences. But uh, some of those things weren't just fireworks, they were huge explosions. You know. We've talked about it here. Like twice the size of a cherry bomb. You know. I heard those. Yeah, yeah they were loud. Uh, at one concert, I remember someone set off a, a Roman candle from the uh, one of the large ones from one of the upper tiers, and so the uh, the different coloured parts of the Roman candle were coming down on the people down below. Mm. And I would think that might hurt a little if you got one on the top of your head, mm, aside from would, burning you. Yeah. But uh, I, I realize it's, uh, you know, they're saluting you, they're saluting the group, and they're happy that you're on stage and all. But uh, I don't know... The, the usual salute that seems to have grown from um, the first time that we ever witnessed it, and apparently the first time that it had ever manifested was... Uh, um, it was down in Montreal where they uh, just spontaneously started to light lighters and matches and the whole place looked like a you know, Milky Way. Oh, I think that would it be nice. It was really touching. Yeah, all the lights. lights. You know, and you get, you get quite, you get some of that. Of course, it's not dangerous and it's really, you know, there's a, a nice feeling to it as well. I thought that, uh... The last time when you recorded part of the album, anyway, uh, the song remains the same in the movie and everything, and the soundtrack and all. The last concert was um, as deafening, or certainly as large a welcome as it was this time. And though you're doing more shows this time, we have found uh, the audience has pressured us more, and everybody else has more uh, to get mm -hmm. there. So I can only say between your last tour, which was. I think about two years, a year and a half ago, yes, it was in two New York. Years ago. Uh, well, it's only increased. Yeah. So it's only increased, which is great. Yes. Yes, you can imagine the amount of anxiety that was uh, sort of settling and digging into our shoulders just prior to leaving because uh, we'd heard all these stories of people camping out five days ahead to get their tickets. And then we heard that we'd won this, that, and the other. Award and yes, you have. You know, it, it didn't take long to strike home that you had quite a reputation to, to sort of live up to. You know. Well, you, of course, uh, being on top, you know, in reputation and in performance. Do you have in your mind someone, other people, who who, uh, if you were going to go to a concert, who, who would you like? Who's your friend? Who's a person you really admire? Uh, respected musician, someone, or several. I know you're probably same as anyone else. You certainly aren't down to one or two people. But if you had a whole bunch of people that you would go see uh, at this given moment, who would you like to see? Now, I know you wanted to see Star Wars as, for instance, a movie, you know, yeah. and you probably want to see Rocky and all the other movies if you haven't seen them already. But Yeah, uh, yeah mainly because I don't go to the uh, movies very much. Do you have an idol, so in other words? Mm? Do you have an idol? Someone that really, you know... James Dean. Mm -hmm. mm. Music-wise, do you have anybody? I mean, whether it was, I don't care, all the way back or whoever. Or... Well, I... I have total admiration for Hendrix because he was such an innovator in the studio as much as anywhere else. He was street center and everybody else as far as his recordings went. And techniques employed, you know. Do you have a chance to meet Jimmy Hendrix? And uh, then, and the way passing back. Just sort of, you know, glanced at you know each sh other shoulders and said hello once in a club. And that was about it. Unfortunately. Yeah. You know, Unfortunately. I never not. saw a lot of these big groups play like the Cream, Hendrix, Frank Chaney. Really. Obviously, uh, performing tonight and has been. Uh, no, actually, actually, we reprieved. It's the day off tonight. That's right, not that's tonight. Not that's right. You're going to do tomorrow, tomorrow this day, yeah. and then Saturday, and then again Monday and Tuesday, right? That's it, yeah. Right. yeah. 
You space that on purpose, as we mentioned before. Have a little bit of break in between the... Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because things, I mean, it's perfect for me because, uh, I don't know, 30% of the equipment went wrong, so it gives a chance for this guy, Tony Franks, who customizes the amps, to be able to come to terms with them and get them right for the next gigs, you know, so it's good. If you had your choice of a place to play, do you, do you prefer, let's say, an outdoor stadium? Do you prefer a place like Madison Square Garden, a small, intimate place, or what? Um, I think somewhere like the, um, the Forum's a nice size, really. The Forum in L.A.? Mm. In Los Angeles? Mm. That's pretty it's much like... the question is if I'm in line, in a way, you know. The amount of people that do want to come and see, you know, your stories of breaking up, you know. How many shows are you going to do in Los Angeles? Uh, I'll have to exaggerate on this one. Six, is it? Seven. Mm. Seven. Six or seven? Six. Six. Mm. Six. Mm. 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 If you had your choice, <laughs> what three or four places in America would you pick if you wanted to stay around for a week or two or a month? <laughs> That's difficult. I know. <laughs> they don't expect me to say New York. Definitely, definitely uh, New York and L.A because the audiences are so fine, really are fine, they're so warming. And um, let's see, here's the third. Well, you can be surprised, you know, s s s some years you can go there and uh, it's a good reception. It's not one of those really, you know, you know, really sort of uh, super intense ones. Next year, fine, you know. Um, I don't know. I guess Dallas. Mm -hmm. mm. Have you ever been to New Orleans? Oh, yeah. Uh, the food but, well, we've played at Baton Rouge, and we're, we're bound to do that in Superdome. Yeah. <laughs> that's a large one. I guess that's, alive. <laughs> that's the largest indoor one, I think, in the country yeah, right now. Pont Pontiac, Michigan was a bit of a handful. <laughs> yes, I did hear about that. I think yeah. that you broke the all-time record. Yeah, we managed to cool them down. Eh? It became like an ocean, you know, they were swinging from side to side, but the minute any of that sort of thing starts happening like that, firecrackers or fight breakouts, you just got to stop and say, hey, come on, you know, we're here for a good time. Don't spoil it, because it's spoiling it for all of us. And um, if you do that, it seems to work. Now, by the time we get to our acoustic set, I particularly remember at Detroit, they were, um, you know, it's cool with cucumbers. <laughs> it was fine. The previous record for the United States was set by you, by the group, in Florida, I believe. No. And now the Pontiac, Michigan thing that you just did. Oh, I see what you mean. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, attendance and everything else. Yeah. Most people. And yeah, true. How many people do you have traveling with you on the road, helping you with all the equipment and all that to you? Hmm. This I don't know. There are so many faceless ones that I just don't even get a chance 50. to meet or relate. Fifty. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Emerson. I mean, how, how many trucks are there? Seven trucks. Mm, seven forty-four. Well, I know one truck driver. You know. One seven oh seven. Just for the equipment and people. No, the group, yeah, and the group. group yeah. and the people that travel with us. How long does the tour last? This one from beginning to end. Six. Ah, well, it, uh, it depends how you look at it. You see, we, we we were, yes, five months if you look at it as an entirety, but we did sort of three and a half weeks on, two weeks off, vacation, and then I believe this section is about close on to six weeks. Then we have another short vacation, and then we have a major assault on the rest of it. You know. Uh, Richard Cole is uh, with Jimmy Page in the studio, too, and he's been with the group all along and on the tour and handling business and sound and people and all that sort of thing. And it is a fantastic thing. When Keith Emerson was here uh, not long ago, as a matter of fact, all three of them had, had stopped by, and they're taking on this huge venture that they're doing with uh, a 70-piece classical music orchestra touring to uh, bring off part of their new album and the sounds and things from pictures and an exhibition and things they had done before. 
so you can just imagine the, uh, the details and you know 50 people and all that and i think most of the audience that goes to a concert jimmy probably doesn't realize how, how many people are behind the scenes putting it all together for you no i guess not you yeah. know that's a fantastic thing. We're going to do the news. Uh, it's forthcoming at uh, 5 o'clock, and uh, there has been a uh, a bad accident through the afternoon with three tractor-trailer trucks jackknifed on the George Washington Bridge, the lower level and all that. So traffic uh, going to and coming from New Jersey and all the rest of that is tied up in the weather. Uh, we'll talk some more to our guests, and we'll play some music yeah. from Led Zeppelin. As a matter of fact, it might be a good idea to play the rain song, and then when we play the rain song, mm -hmm. or something like that, then we'll get rid of the rain. Our guest is Jimmy Page of Led Zeppelin at WNEWFM in New York, and um, we were talking about concerts and the rigors of the tour and music and the fun, too, of the tours, and the fun that performers have getting uh, those vibrations from audiences, and once the vibrations come, then you go, and that's it. That's the way it works, isn't it? You feel that thing, you go out, and you, they respond, and the vibe was really still the way. You know, actually, to be to be honest, that uh, that gig, that, that that particular gig started off with such an electrifying start. You know, we knew that it was going to be a good one in our own minds. You know, we were just sort of convinced because. Uh, Every little chance that you took worked, you know, and the synchronization was unbelievable. And although we only got through the three numbers that I described before, um, we still hoped that there'd be a chance that came back on. That's in Florida, right? Yeah. And of course, there wasn't a, there wasn't a great hoo-ha when we walked off. I think it's the time lapse that caused the problem. And the fact that the barrier broke, which was unforgivable, because once a barrier breaks, obviously, everybody surges forward. At that time that this uh, electrical storm, the thunderstorm, hit, a plane went up to check the weather to see how long the storm might last. Well, that was one of the reasons why we stayed behind, stayed behind for a long half an hour, because we wanted to, um, you know, just check all the possibilities, one of them being that uh, the USAF sent up a special plane to to check out the atmospherics to see how long this thing should last. And it was little things like that that were going on behind the scene that I know a lot of people didn't know. I think they probably thought we split as soon as we got off, you know. But we were there a good half hour. Well, I know one thing uh, thus far, the reports from New York are uh, everything everyone anticipated and hoped for. Uh, we, of course, would like to have everyone that wanted to be at the concert be able to be there. Even with six concerts, uh, there are as many people that will not be there because they can't be there a lot more than uh, those that are going to be there. And I think people who have tickets should be uh, grateful and lucky they got them because I know our feedback is that zap. They all want to be there and they can't. So mm -hmm. next time, instead of six, we want to do 12 and you can stay here for a month. Why don't you yes, do that? It's a do dilemma, really, this whole thing of supply and demand. You know, it's. Because when it you all... get knocked one way, right. you know, and uh, not the other way, you know. Not for doing too big a place, isn't too many of them. And then not for, 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 you know, not doing enough space to accommodate the fans, you know. It's, it is quite a dilemma. Not quite, a, not quite so much a dilemma I might add as a program, because that, that always seems to be the biggest headache of everything. Maybe we should talk to uh, Mr. Grant and try to do a, uh, uh, a... The last time you were here, you were doing an album, so we couldn't do a broadcast, so maybe we'll do a broadcast, and then everybody wants to hear it. We'll talk to him and to you, too. But let me go back. Let me go back to the beginning with you when you were however old you were and got interested in music and started to uh, take a guitar in your hand. Um, and then I'd like for you... Jimmy Page to reconstruct that time to where you are now, sort of briefly, if you can follow that. Go back to when you well, first started. Well, the formative started. years weren't weren't really that uh, constructive because um, there wasn't really anybody to, to sort of uh, um, learn from, you know. And the, the, the first problem was to get the damn thing in tune. 
Mm. Before you could start sort of learning by ear from records, which is basically how I learned. Did you learn by listening to records? Yeah, sure, sure. I had some, uh, at uh, a later date, I had some sort of formal classical training. Just because I wanted to get to grips with the different uh, finger-picking techniques that were employed. Um, I guess the main reason for that was because I was doing studio work at the time, which employed just about every kind of uh, um, style of guitar that you were, you were required to play. You could possibly imagine that. <laughs> Some of it was quite horrifying, you know, when you were just a rock and roller. <laughs> but how old were you when you started to, when you picked up a guitar and said, I want to play guitar and I want to be a musician? Do you remember? About 14, 15. 14, 15. And then each day, or was it whatever time, how much time did you spend? Because you are oh, recognized well, as... Oh, at that time, that time I was playing in the morning before I went to school. I used to take it to school and have it confiscated. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I came home, I'd be playing again. You know, it was just uh, all the time. All the time. I think when I look back now, I was just taking my frustrations out on me, you know. <laughs> I think but, you, uh, you do that now, too, when you feel like I it do, on stage. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly did last night when I broke a string in... Uh, in Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> I'll probably <coughs> play one of the best sections after that. I've played for a long time on the ordinary six string, you know. But, uh, well, that's how it goes, you know. It's uh, it's never the same, you know. And there's a hell of a sort of emotive quality that comes out in it. Well, because, Everybody, you know. Because of you, because of a Jimmy Page, and because of all the other musicians and whatever instruments they play and how successful they become, I could say, you know, like Keith Emerson with keyboards and you with a guitar and all. Uh, I think you're responsible, you know you're responsible for, uh, let's say in our area now, maybe at this moment, 100,000 people, young people, are now practicing mm -hmm. or working with a guitar yeah. with the hopes of eventually becoming very successful or successful. Uh, to whatever degree, and the same with uh, those who are doing drums and so forth. Um, is there a philosophy? Is there something that you would say to those people? Because they really are there, listening right now. I mean, people who are, uh, whatever their dream is, whatever the instrument that they're really working with, and, and most of them are... Once they've covered the, the initial basics where they can actually tune the instrument and, uh, you know, play a few chords, and they start weaving their way into sort of, uh, uh, you know, single note playing. Um, it's quite amazing, you know. Every guitarist seems to have his own statement. You know, no matter how raw he be, that might sound very odd to you, but it's, no. it's, it's always there. It really is, you know. And um, because basically all it is, you know, an instrument as such is only really another form of uh, communication, you know. It's, it's, uh, it's not a voice and it's, uh, it's not a painting or a poem, it's just, you know, you know, uh, a set of frequencies which, which I tend to th feel have far more you know, emotional quality about them and possibly uh, other things, you know, they hit you more immediately. Jimmy Page is our guest at WNEWFM in New York. The rain song is up, and then we'll talk about privacy. Yes, rain, very appropriate. At this nice. Point of time. <laughs> Jimmy Page, our guest, rain song we just did. Uh, I know you wrote it a while ago. Was there a reason? And... Uh, some particular inspiration that came at that time? Do you remember? I know you've written enough things that... Quarterly, yes. Yes, but uh, I got together with Robert and played the chords to him, the melody that was within it. And uh, he came up with the idea of doing it as seasons. You know, he employs three seasons in that. Uh, he did it so well that I, that I didn't... Uh, I have the heart to mention that I had this other long piece which 
There's about 25 minutes, which which involves the seasons. There's only four short sections of vocal, but each following part sort of reflects the seasons as such, you know. And uh, we'll have to change that to the elements now. <laughs> <laughs> now you have to add one more hour to your concert to do, do 25 minutes of the seasons. <coughs> Jimmy well, just stick it in days and confused like everything else. <laughs> you couldn't possibly do all the music, so I guess uh, that's another... No, it's a shame. It really How do you feel about that? You know, you realize everybody has a personal favorite or for some reason or another. You yeah. just can't possibly do it all, okay? Can't do it. You can't. Yeah. That's the hardest thing. I, it reminds me of the uh, time Elvis Presley came here a couple of years ago, and Elvis had not been in New York in 10 or 12 years for any reason at all, and he came to the garden and did a concert. It was on stage for 47 minutes, and then left, and uh, didn't do an encore or anything, and I did talk about it the next day, and I, I thought, you know, he just singles, and most of his singles were two mm -hmm. or three minutes, that he could have been up there for four days <laughs> and never right. repeated the same songs, That's you right. know? Yeah. It's tough. Yes, I was surprised when I first saw him, just how much rock and roll he did play. Yeah. You know, he was doing all those milk cow blues and blue side shoes. Rip it up, you know. Pretty good. You're talking about Carl Perkins earlier. You <laughs> right into that. Right back to the yeah. beginning. Carl Perkins. Yeah, I was amazed. I heard one track by him called Caledonia. And the voice is identical to the voice that Cochran employed after him. I don't know whether it was, you know, whether it was uh, done on purpose, but boy, oh boy, it's so close in uh, Britain for years, and now it's become a huge favorite here. Anyway, if you're into tennis, do that. Your um, private life, Jimmy Page, our guest. They have, uh, it's more clay courts here, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's it more is. more grass courts? Well, now it's everywhere. I mean, they've, mm. uh, here in Manhattan, they have, uh, they'll mm. build a closed thing out of plastic, and you can go in, and they'll put up oh. courts, and you have to reserve them uh, days and weeks ahead because they're all, everybody's into tennis. Mm. Even uh, people my age are into tennis and all that. I mean, it hasn't stopped at all, mm. young people and all. Do you have any problem walking down the street here in your private life now that you are Jimmy in Page, England? Jimmy Page of Led in Zeppelin? England? Everywhere. In England, I travel on public transport. I'm you do? I'm sure the anonymity of it, yeah. Do That's because I, I didn't just, you know, I, there was a whole period when I didn't do any interviews for, what, two years. And uh, there may have been the occasional radio on, but it still didn't relate to a face, you see. Yeah, the television uh, and the rest of it would uh, make you work. We didn't alert. do any television. We used to do television. Right, I know. I, I, don't, I don't remember you ever, you know, aside from your own thing. No, there, was there, no there are a couple of pilot the things, but uh, they weren't really supposed to come out. They just happened to come out. Do you find that uh, because you are confined to your hotel, uh, motel, whatever, whichever city you're in and all, people find out and all because you're on tour and because you are Led Zeppelin, does that uh, restrict your activity or do you find a way to get around that and sneak away as someone else if you want to go do something in that particular town? No. Huh? No, I'm not really a master disguise like that. I think Ringo used to do that, didn't he? All of them did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, you usually find that the crowd that we, that, you know, we sort of uh, attract are, uh, are not the sort of rowdies, you know, because we're not really basically a rebel razor group, which has always been the connotation put on heavy metal bands, actually, I've always... But um, they usually just want sort of, you uh, know, autograph and just shake your hand and say, well, it's really nice to meet you. And that's it. There's just so many of them there, you know. You try and do as many as you can. <laughs> when you're not working, what do you like to do? I mean, for instance, after this tour is over and you get a break, well, what do you like to do? Alone, with your lady, whatever you want to do, where do you like well, to go and where do you like to just, hang out? Just about going to be finished, darling. Be working in the studio at home. I've got this sort of computerized one, which uh, uh, has memory banks in it. You can just build the whole thing up and uh, play it back two years later the way you'd planned it, and it's exactly the same. 
So hmm. it's going to be ideal for working on sort of uh, separate material that we now have on the shelf. I've had time to get to. And you're writing? Oh, yeah. Uh, when, when you're correlating all this yeah. stuff, too. Oh, no. Yeah. You find time, even on tour, if you get an idea or whatever, and you need to get the thing down, you mm. make notes and carry on with it. Well, it's because, yeah, cassette mainly. I mean, you have something, and you know it needs an end, you know, an end section to finish it off. And you didn't get it at the time, you didn't get it, you know, say three months later. One day it just clicks and it would work, you know. And Ten Years Gone was done in very much in the same way. Because uh, when I started working on the idea of that at home, I had three eight-track tapes, three individual eight-track tapes, with these different sections on. And um, I tape-copied the verses and then um, just spliced in these different sections and they just fit together. Well, let's see, you know, it's great. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it can be done, you know. Yeah. Um, you know I'm always sort of fooling around like that. And I really enjoy um, uh, exploring the, the qualities of sound that can be employed on the guitar so it doesn't sound like a guitar. Because when you think of the, <coughs> the amount of guitar sounds that have been presented before, you know, like Segovia and Neatest Plantas and uh, McLaughlin, Hendrix, Crampton Beck. Um, well, there's just, just so many, but everyone has a different tone. And you could almost think of that in a way of a, of a sort of string section cellos and, and, and violas. And now with the, with the synthesizers as well, you can get a brass quality as well. So you're and I feel the time's right to sort of come forward with the orchestral piece. Mm -hmm. You're happy in the studio then too, just as well I as really on the stage. I really enjoy it. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. You're just as happy in there working and as long as you're doing yeah. something that you hear. Mm. Our guest is Jimmy Page. Uh, Led Zeppelin is in town. That's always an event and a happy event for so many people. And uh, we are at WNEWFM in New York. We are here. Matter of fact, we were just doing a couple of pictures and talking and so forth. Uh, a night off tonight for Led Zeppelin from their uh, six uh, dates at the Garden that uh, were sold out a long time ago. We don't have that much time left, Jimmy, and we're going to be going off and... and we spent a lot of time together this afternoon and on behalf of our audience. I want to thank you and the group for all the music you've given us in this afternoon for the time because it uh, it has been beautiful. And no, you don't normally uh, do a, it's not really I'm an really interview or whatever. It, and, yeah. But I want to tell you, you're welcome. And uh, yeah. Mr. Plant was here one time and he kind of yeah. liked it too and all. And whatever you see in the way of albums or whatever you'd like mm -hmm. to do. <laughs> We're looking forward to tomorrow night and Saturday night and again Monday and oh, Tuesday for your good. concerts. That should be good. And uh, I thank you for your time. And uh, on behalf of our audience, they dearly worship you, as you know. They love you. They look forward to the yes. more challenges you got to give them. More yeah. music. Well, it's those people that, you know, give us that great warm feeling that, you know, makes you worthwhile, you know. Come back again. You're always Hold welcome. <laughs> and say hello to everybody in the group for us. We really loved it. Thank you very much. Jimmy Page and uh, Led Zeppelin, we wish you continued success. We are WNEW-FM Metro Media Stereo in New York.